Around 300,000 to 125,000 years ago in Africa, evolution of the Homo erectus lineage progressed towards the emergence of the first anatomically modern human, which is our lineage. The term anatomically modern humans is used in archaeology to describe modern day Homo sapiens as you would imagine the average human to be today. Because there were many closely related species within the genus Homo, such as Homo neanderthalensis and Homo floriensensis, that shared many similar traits with Homo sapiens, the term anatomically modern humans, or AMH, is used to distinguish between modern humans and other archaic humans. It is believed that our ancestors, the first AMHs, originated in East Africa around 200,000 years ago. We are the last species of the Homo lineage to still exist today, but when AMHs first emerged, we were far from being the only humans living on Earth. In Eurasia, Homo neanderthalensis, also known as Neanderthals, had become highly specialized for many diverse environments. Living 300,000 to 28,000 years ago, these hominins survived several glacial periods and occupied different environments across Europe and the Middle East. This species was using Mode 3 technology, known as Mousterian technology, and later they began using Chateau Peronian technology, which was defined by blade tools that were very similar to those used by AMHs. They were able to control fire, they wore clothing, and they lived in caves as well as open air areas. Although previously believed to be dumb brutes, Neanderthals actually had a very complex culture. They are believed to have had a foundation of religion as they buried their dead with decorative pigments and offerings. They also had the cognitive ability to create symbolic art. Two Spanish sites, the Anton Rock Shelter and the Aviones Cave, show evidence of shells decorated with orange pigments. This demonstrates just how complex and advanced these hominins truly were, as they had substantial cognitive abilities. Yet, somehow, the second migration of AMHs out of Africa proved to be fatal to the Neanderthal species. Despite their ability to adapt to multiple environments that enabled them to thrive in Eurasia for almost 300,000 years, AMHs were still able to take over this region and become the only surviving human species after 6 million years of human evolution. The relatively rapid extinction of Neanderthals caused by the presence of AMHs has left many archaeologists puzzled. If Neanderthals had such complex culture and technology, AMHs could not have simply outsmarted them. There must have been other reasons why Neanderthals were unable to continue to coexist with AMHs. In this video, we will be exploring various Neanderthal replacement hypotheses to understand exactly how the species ceased to exist. To explain the relatively rapid end to the Neanderthal species with the introduction of AMHs into their territory, archaeologists have three main hypotheses. They explore how disease, environmental changes, and competitive exclusion could have explained how these AMHs were able to flourish while killing all the Neanderthals in overlapping regions. Scientists hypothesize that AMHs carried diseases from Africa, to which they were immune to, infected Neanderthals, and eventually it wiped them out. This scenario is very plausible. Throughout record history, human populations have infected other populations, such as early settlers in America who exposed Native Americans to European diseases that ravaged their communities. A paper published in 2010 explored how a viral disease could have caused Neanderthal extinction. Because AMHs evolved in Africa, they would have gone through intense natural selection and co-evolved with pathogens in their environment. These viral infections would have killed those AMHs with a weaker immune system, and only AMHs with strong natural immunity would have survived and continued to reproduce. Recent DNA analyses suggest that the Neanderthal population in Eurasia during the arrival of AMHs was small, just in the 10,000 range and they shared very little genetic variation among their groups. So if one Neanderthal could not fight off a foreign viral disease, then most, if not all, of the Neanderthals would not survive either. Researchers determined through further analysis that the virus in question probably came from the family Herpes cerviridae, and molecular analysis of its genome shows that it did indeed evolve in parallel to primates in human evolution millions of years ago in Africa in the same region. These findings suggest that this family of viruses coincides with the theory that earlier AMH's ancestors co-evolved with them and spread it to Neanderthals in Eurasia when they arrived. Because we currently do not have the technology to find this evidence on Neanderthal bones, this idea remains a hypothesis, but a pretty good one at that.
A different hypothesis proposes how climactic changes could have hurt the population size of Neanderthals. Although Neanderthals were able to adapt to several glacial cycles, they did not settle further north than 55 degrees north in Europe, which suggests that they did have a limit to how adaptable they were to the cold weather. In the region of Europe where Neanderthals were inhabiting, oxygen isotope graphs at MIS-3 dating to around 50,000 to 25,000 years ago reveal that the temperatures that these Neanderthals would have experienced were no more extreme than what their ancestors had survived in the past. What was different from earlier periods was how fast the temperature was changing. This rapid change in temperature would have caused significantly strong winds, which during cold spikes would have likely produced temporary wind chills that were cold enough to prove fatal for Neanderthals. Researchers believe that the suddenness of the cold spikes and its wind chill would have left Neanderthals completely unprepared and exposed. Although they were smart, Neanderthals would not have had enough time to adapt their technology to meet the new demands of their environment. While the Neanderthals suffered, the AMHs were prepared. The AMHs were adapted to the African climate. In other words, their mechanisms of survival were based on losing heat, not retaining it, and their vulnerability to the cold resulted in them developing more advanced technology and clothing that enabled them to spread into Europe. When these dangerously cold winds hit, the AMHs were ready, while the Neanderthals, unfortunately, were not, which wiped out the Neanderthal populations at northern latitudes, but a few Neanderthal populations in southern Iberia would still have survived. What is believed to have happened here is the creation of a brief geographical barrier called the Ebro Frontier that would have separated the Neanderthals from the AMHs. When this barrier disappeared, the weakened and dwindling Neanderthal populations would have easily been taken over by the AMHs or diluted by gene flow, thus ending the last surviving populations of Neanderthals. Archaeologists who disagree with this hypothesis argue that when these climactic conditions would have returned to warmer and more suitable environments, Neanderthals would have moved back to their northern latitudes, thus avoiding the AMHs in the south. In this chart, however, computational methods were used to create a model of the potential distributions where Neanderthals would have survived, with the red being the highest likely region. The dots mark Neanderthal sites. The lack of fully exploitation in these regions after the introduction of AMHs into Europe, they argue, show that there is another force causing their extinction, as otherwise Neanderthal populations would have started to thrive once more in the warming regions. The last hypothesis that we will be discussing is the competitive exclusion hypothesis. Because Neanderthals and AMHs were very similar, they would have occupied very similar niches, including where they lived and what they ate. Many of their essential resources would have overlapped, causing competition between these two species. Distribution patterns show just how the presence of these humans significantly affected Neanderthals. As the green AMHs moved further into Europe, the red Neanderthals were pushed to the western side of Europe and their population density significantly decreased in the overlapping ranges. A research paper published in April of 2020 applies the concept of competitive exclusion using a numerical two-dimensional hominin dispersal model to explore the forces that would have given AMHs the upper hand. The underlying factor seems to be the difference between interbreeding rates of AMHs and Neanderthals. Whereas Neanderthals were interbreeding at a much lower rate, AMHs gained the advantage by repopulating areas more quickly. Their reproductive strengths stemmed from being, as the researcher says, innovative generalists that could outcompete the specialists who lived in smaller and more fragmented habitats. This observation supports what we already know about Neanderthals, that they are extremely smart and extremely specialized for their environment. But with varying changes that were brought on by competition, this would prove to be detrimental for the species. We will never truly know what happened to these two species in Europe that caused the Neanderthals to be completely replaced by, by the AMHs. But what we do know is that these hypotheses can overlap. Even though we went over three distinct hypotheses, they're so unique that there could be factors from one and from another hypothesis that did have a negative effect on these Neanderthals and eventually led to their demise. I also want to acknowledge that although we went over three main hypotheses, there are many other hypotheses out there as the evidence we have tends to be limited by genes and, and the sites we find with the technology we can use. This means that there's a multitude of hypotheses out there and we will never be 100% sure of really what truly happened. Although the Neanderthal species is extinct, they have not completely
completely vanished into prehistory. As I said before, AMHs and Neanderthal distributions were overlapping in Eurasia, so exactly how intimate were the interactions between these two species? Well, new genetic evidence shows that these two species were very intimate, as modern humans today continue to have small amounts of Neanderthal DNA. Asian and European genomes possess 1.8 and 1.7% of Neanderthal DNA respectively, and new evidence shows that even people with African ancestry have almost 0.5% of Neanderthal DNA. This means that in a way, the Neanderthal lineage will always live on through us.